Welcome to the Designated Drinker Show, the podcast that's raising the bar on craft cocktails. I'm your host, Louise Solis, and with me, as always, is my very, very talented friend, who is the MVP of this show, the Mixtress DC, <laughs> Gina. <laughs> that's funny. It's like the only time in my life I've ever been called that, for sure. That is not true. Yeah, all right, maybe. Superhero, my shelf on the L. No, I mean MVP, <laughs> MVP. Maybe in my kid's life, they're like, yeah, she's the mom of the year. It's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah very yeah. boring. You like that? All right, Gina. We all know this. There is no crying in baseball, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Tom Hanks' famous line, out of a league of her own. Yep. Um, which, in case of any of our <laughs> listeners don't know, it is a classic. The movie is now more than 30 years old. And it starred Gina Davis, Madonna, and uh, Rosie O'Donnell, of course, along with Tom Hanks and many, many others. Again, in case you don't know, the plot of the movie tells the story of the Rockford Peaches. Now, I gotta tell you, I didn't remember that their name was the Rockford Peaches in their inaugural season. But here's what is really great about this film, and I wonder how many people actually know this. It's actually, um, it's a film that's mostly based on a true story. Um, and it's based on the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League. And get this, it was A-A-G-P-B-L. That's a lot of letters. Um, and it was founded during World War II in 1943 by um, Philip Wrigley, obviously the gum magnet and the Chicago um, Cubs owner. I didn't know that he did that. I think it's really cool. Now, unfortunately, the league only existed until 1954, um, but it went on to be the forerunner of women's professional league sports in the United States, which brings me to today's designated drinker. He is the owner and team president of the DC Divas. He is my friend, Rich Daniel. Welcome to the show, Rich. It's wonderful to be here. Thank my you. Friend. My friend. Indeed. Yeah. Hi, Rich. Nice to meet you. Hopefully, we're going to be friends after that. I think we will be, <laughs> for right. sure. Right. The MVP is the most valuable poor. Yes. Oh, right? yes. there we yes. go. I'm looking, for, I, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, that's absolute. You know, I might put that on the bar, for sure. You go right ahead. There you go. <laughs> Absolutely. So, Rich, I want the listeners to find out about your career and your journey, because it's so special stinking impressive and interesting um, and how the hell you became a professional uh, sports team owner um, all of those things I'm going to dive into but first can you kick up the show and let us all the listeners understand and know what the DC Divas are the show will be over when I finish <laughs> <laughs> right the DC Divas is an incredible group this year and roughly every year of 65 to 70 women who play tackle football age range 18 and then some, yeah. right? There is no <laughs> limit, but you have to be 18 to start. Over 600 plus alumni and 20 plus years of playing. NCAA rules, full kit, serious football, but also workforce development, community givebacks. Uh, all types of things that we do year round to not only grow the individual who's sacrificing so much and dedicating so much to play the sport, but also everybody we come in contact with. So you go back to your work, your family, your church, your community, that's your real life. You're adding on the football specialness to it, right? And the uniqueness of that. And when you have somebody's attention by doing something that unique, our feeling is as an organization that there's a lot of responsibility that goes with that. It's not only your opportunity to play, which yeah. is awesome in its own right, and that could be enough of the mission statement. Giving people a chance to do something they've never done before. Yeah. But that's maybe just the beginning of the mission. And it goes a lot of different directions from being excellent on the field to how can we be better individually. And that requirement, it comes to you whether you seek it or not, by simply by being in, in the environment of doing it, the uniqueness of the journey we're on because it does demand a great deal of you physically, mentally, spiritually, financially, <laughs> right? Every yeah. way you can think of, it pulls on you to do that. And so that requires a lot of us who are supporting it or part of it to find every which way we can to, to mimic that, to meet that. Yeah. And that will leave for long days. That will leave for um, a lot of good memories and a lot of good things that have happened from caring about the people that play. It's great. It's great. And it's, it, what you, it, it's interesting to think about the difference between, to, between professional sports for men and women and what you have there that is so incredibly special, it is about being better. And unfortunately, I don't see, I don't think we see it 
all the time in all of our professional sports. I mean, it's amazing to hear that that's part of your, like the core of what you do. Yeah, that's the realness of it, right? It's if, if I was talking to you, having worked in the NFL, which I had the privilege of doing, if I was doing that now and representing somebody making $14 million a year, would I have the same attitude about what I just said? And I would, right? I'd have more resources to do it with. Yeah. And we could go farther and wider in a faster manner. But the heart behind that of, again, I just go back to the level of respect that I've developed over my years of being involved in professional sports and also at different levels, collegiate and otherwise, the amount of effort and uh, sacrifice it takes to be excellent. Yeah. And not just at that, but at all the other things you were also doing. It's exceptional and extraordinary, extraordinary Yeah. to me. And I think that's where the passion continually gets renewed and uh, reinvigorated and raised the level of, if possible, because you keep seeing it. Right? And then you see the, the effects of having the people that have gone through it or participated, what that now looks like for them, whether it's coaching in the NFL or coaching at the high school level or being a better CEO in your company because you went through something that was extraordinary. Because yeah. you tackled the shit out of somebody who Amen. didn't show up on time. No. HR, <laughs> that's right. Get HR in here, by God. We'll fix, we'll fix it. Yeah, exactly. I'm good with that. Yeah, line up in the hallway. Let's, let's settle this right now. Right? Yeah. Whatever happened to that? Yeah, yeah. Discipline. Yeah. 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 Discipline comes with it as well. Yes. Well, no, everyone gets a, a star and a blue ribbon for showing up now. You get the respect and the recognition, yeah. which put a value on that. Exactly, yeah. You, you can. It's impossible. Yeah. I mean, you can try, but to actually garner that and realize you're not only doing that with the people around you, but then you, everybody you come in contact with are like, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's the hardest thing to earn. I, I, I said that to my, I have two kids, and I was like, the hardest thing you'll ever earn in your life is respect. And they're like, that's a stupid mom. I'm like, yeah, okay. You, say, <laughs> you can't pay for respect. You're correct. You can't pay for it. You can only earn it. You can only earn it, and people, because people will turn around, you have billions of dollars, they turn around and call you an asshole, mm -hmm. right? But yeah, but if they respect you, they will not. Yeah, and the genuineness of that is just, it's just constantly reinforced. So yeah. how did this all start for you? How did you, I mean, how did you end up here? I mean, like, it's such a great journey. I want to dig into this well, I'd love bit. to teach that class. <laughs> right? I can tell you now where you will be in 20 years. You want to come on? It only costs you X number of sessions at $39.99, right? We, can, yeah. we will get you from here to there. But, um, telling a story. Being a good producer and a good reporter in a local television station, ABC, realizing that women were playing football. It was the first year, their first home game. Uh, we had covered the Washington pro football team extensively, exhaustingly, right? More than any other thing in this, in this city for the entire time I was a, in television. And so to see something new and different, it's like, oh, we gotta go to their first home game. So they won their first home game on a last second touchdown. It was a minute 30, 30 story on the six o'clock news. Wow. That was it. Minute yeah. 30, you go, okay, we're not doing that again. Next story, move on next day, 11 o'clock news. You just keep going. But I went back to the sales department and I said, look, we do an hour on the, uh, then the Washington Redskins all the time. We should do an hour on the women. People would be fascinated by this. And they said, nobody will watch, we can't sell it. Well, they said that about the Caps and every other pro team. There were no specials on any of those other teams. It was all Washington pro football. And so I didn't, that chip is probably still there a little bit of, I knew better. I yeah. knew better. And so for two years, we followed them on our own going to games, practices, different things in the community or whatever, follow them at you know, their job, and put together a little mini doc that ran in some little festivals. And you know, we didn't go to South by Southwest, yeah. right? We, weren't, we didn't go that, because we were still working. Yeah. We still had a job. <laughs> and we're doing this because we just believed in it. And that helped starting to PR work, getting them in stories, putting them in other stations, BBC, just other places to get their word out. And then a new owner bought the team in 2004, uh, right after we did the charity game with the Junkies, which got a lot of attention. It was most attention. It was like a battle of the sexes yeah. kind of version. Uh, and then I became the general manager in 04 to 05. And that lasted all the way through until he was going to sell the team or actually stop the team uh, in the fall of 2018 into the spring of 2019. And that's when I bought the team. So not like you would draw it up. 
not like you would expect it. I never thought I would be the owner during that process. I took ownership in it. Yeah. But I never felt like I was going to, that, you know, five years from now, that's going to be the next thing. It was planned for that. It wasn't all of a sudden, hey, this is over or buy it. Wow. So that was the, the moment of let's buy it, which was a month before the season started. We finally agreed. And here we are post-COVID five years later almost. And uh, I think in a more stronger position than when we started, honestly. I think COVID um, definitely for some businesses and some different things like, like pushed you into really tightening it up and like figuring out like how to make things better. Like, I don't, you know what I mean? Like it didn't just, I don't, I think it forced you to realize how do you generate money? How do you do these things? Yeah. Cause it wasn't just dribbling in anymore. Now it's gone. Well, for us, you know, you couldn't, you couldn't practice. Yeah. We had, a, we canceled the entire season. Yeah. So unlike the NFL, we couldn't sequester in a hotel. We couldn't test twice a day. All these things that, that require money and staff and, and the, the way to be able to do it at a high level. And we're like, we may never do this again. So I just had my first season as an owner. We were in the St. James. We are in this beautiful indoor facility. Incredible experience. Oh, wait a minute. We may not do this again. Wow. So the pause, right, of that uncertainty allowed me to reorganize our structure. So I acquired the team as an LLC because it was the quickest thing to do at that time. But I always thought we should be a nonprofit or have a nonprofit arm at least, if not be a nonprofit in our operating structure. So we started operating as a nonprofit. Eventually that'll, that will still be an arm and the for-profit business will take hold, but it's not the time for that yet. When it will happen, it will happen and it will make sense, but the nonprofit will be, that'll, that's who we are. That's the, real, that's the reality of what we are, right? And if we never played another game again, what would those 600 plus alumni do? What would we do with those examples? What would we do with our history? What would we do with all those skills or you know, the experiences you've gathered? And What do you do with that? Just keep it to yourself? No, no, of course not. So there would be ways that we could, from speaking or clinics or other community, there are other ways to give, give back without actually playing, right? And eventually we figured, of course, someday they'll, we'll figure this out. This is not a forever thing, although it felt like forever. A couple of those months during that period, like, yeah. this, I don't know when this is going to not be. Yeah. I think we all got there. Yeah, you know, it was hard to see. Yeah. Like the tree through the forest some, sometimes. Yes, yeah. yes. But the Absolutely. faith and belief that, again, and knowing that there was all this value, all these people, the, the human capital is off the charts of what yeah. that is and can be if you can, again, marshal it, lead it, direct it, show it, show up, show out. It's powerful stuff. Um, so I'm glad we didn't stop. You're like, I'm just listening to it. I'm like, this is gonna like ready for like the big thing I'm behind it, like, and then on this chart, <laughs> right? Like, you're so amazing to listen to speak. It's like, it's, um, I don't know. So you know, you know what? You're I, like transcending. I don't know. I can't explain <laughs> it. Captivating. Look at yeah. that. Well, it's so, what you do. Yeah. Like, it's amazing, well, right? He's a great storyteller. Yeah. 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 That's what I want to talk about next. But let's go and uh, let's do this. Let's do this tip. Okay. Let's Tips and it. tricks. Let's okay. do it. Ready? Here's my tip for 2024. Citrus and bananas. Citrus, bananas, plantains. Citrus, bananas, anything from the Southern Hemisphere. It is winter here, and this is my jar of gold. So what's in here is milk, bananas, and a little bit of vanilla that were cooked down, and they became like almost like a pudding. And it is so delicious, right? It's raw chopped. You don't have to make it look beautiful. And I will give a recipe for that. So basically it is uh, two bananas, one cup of sugar, uh, one vanilla bean scraped and put it inside and you're gonna put it onto your stove and you're gonna let it like basically start to caramelize. And when that starts to happen, you're gonna pour one cup of milk on top of it and you're gonna let it be loose. And you're gonna say it looks a little bit like, uh, you know, soggy cereal. That's perfect, you nailed it. Soggy cereal is what you're looking for. Then you're gonna take half that amount and you're gonna put it into another jar and then you're gonna fill it with your favorite rum. I chose a Dominican rum today um, and you're gonna let it just sit. Don't shake it, don't shake it, don't make it crazy, right? You just kind of like want to make it so that you can um, see it in there. It is infusing. It's got a wonderful flavor. Well, now you're like, what are you going to use this for? Well, 
You could just drink it from a jar because that's really what I'm tempted to do right now. It smells so good. Um, when you have the non-alcoholic part of it, which is made, you could actually make your kids a nice like non-alcoholic banana daiquiri if you're not drinking during these months or you want a different uh, fun idea for a non-alcoholic drink. This is great. Just put a little bit of ice, blend it, done. You want to have your adult version of it. We're going to use this plus some of that plus a little bit of cream and we're gonna make ourselves a bananas. I wouldn't even call it a milk punch. I would just call it a banana. Yeah, I'll call it a milk punch. Banana milk punch, so enjoy. That shit's bananas. It really is bananas, <laughs> isn't it? But you infuse it with the bananas after you've made this into this like amazing like cream and then you infuse the rum and it's like Fucking delicious. It delicious. is delicious. It is delicious. delicious. I can't wait. I mean, yeah. you let me taste like just that little tiny drop yeah. at the top when no one was looking. It's it, good. I can't so wait. So when your bananas are going bad on the counter, you know what to do. I just usually throw them in a protein shake. Now I've got something else to do with them. <laughs> Boring. Throw them in your cocktail. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So where are they going to go to get this bananas you're going to go to, you're gonna go to designateddrinker.show for the tips, tricks, and how-tos. And then you can follow us on Instagram at designateddrinker, and you can see my shiny face explain to you how to infuse your rum with bananas and a little bit of uh, sugar. And goodness. All right, so if you didn't catch that, don't worry. You can just scroll down into the episode notes. We'll have links to designateddrinker.show because, again, we're in our seventh season, so there's six seasons plus of cocktail recipes, tips and tricks, and Gina's shared so much with you. You definitely want to go grab that. And the other things, we'll make sure we have a link to Instagram um, so you can see her in action. And another thing I would love to do is make sure that there is a link so that people can find out more about DC Divas. And so. Absolutely. Cool. DCDivas.com, but social media, at DC Divas Football. Yep. Instagram, TikTok, whatever yep. you like, Facebook. So we're going to make sure that's all in the episode notes so you don't even have to try to. Go grab a pen and write it down. It'll be just a hmm. touch away. That's a fun new season that like follow, right? Yeah. Yeah. I know. Absolutely. All right. So all this brings us to the end of part one with Desiree Drinker, the owner and team president, manager, all of the things, the king of the DC Divas, <laughs> <laughs> Rich Daniel. But you if <laughs> you like that? <laughs> um, but if you're anything like me and Gina, um, one round is just never enough. So go top off the drink and get ready for part two of this episode as we continue our boozy banter. And Gina's going to share a special play cocktail recipe that is sure to inspire some excessive dancing in the end zone. Ah, <laughs> that's good. That's good. Excessive dance? Is there such a thing? The Designated Drinker Show is produced by Missing Link, a Latino-owned, strategy-driven, creatively-fueled production co-op. From ideation to creation, we craft human connections through intelligent, engaging, and informative content. Also in the Missing Link lineup of podcasts is Roger That, a podcast dedicated to guiding you through the haze of dementia, led by skilled caregivers. Now, if you're looking for a whole new way to enjoy the theater, check out Between Acts, an immersive audio theater podcast experience. Each episode takes you on a spellbinding journey through the works of newfound playwrights, from dramas to comedies and everything in between. Find Missing Link's League of Podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And while you're there, please don't forget to follow, download, and review the shows. Your reviews help our shows reach new audiences. To find out more about Missing Link, visit missinglink.company. That's missinglink.company.